Kiwi. And uh, time for State of It with Sal and Manning, the week in politics. Uh, joining us at livenews.co.nz. Morning, Sal. Yeah, good morning, Glenn. And uh, a lot of action in Parliament yesterday. Um, I noticed on the news last night uh, a lot of betting going around whether or not Winston Peters would be booted out of um, Parliament uh, or, or the debating chamber, I should say, um, though he has been booted out of Parliament before. But um, yeah. he certainly was yesterday. Yes, he was. It took one day. I think think the punters uh, were kind of betting on would Winston Peters be booted out of Parliament's question time in the month of March, you know, before months th- March 31st. So uh, it took one day into it and, uh, and out he went. Now, what, what we uh, saw, I think uh, David Farrow, political pundit and uh, friend of the National Party, was the big winner on the day on that, and I think he was interviewed on 3 News. But uh, going back to what what had occurred there, is uh, there was a question that came through from Winston Peters um, to uh, the um, the Minister of Local Government, Nick Smith, and uh, it was obviously a contentious question, and it had had a lot of attention prior to Parliament sitting. And it was really Winston Peters starting to get into that area where He's at his best, you know, in, in financial impropriety or that, that alleged impropriety is uh, where he kind of peels away, you know, all the layers to try and get down to the nitty gritty. And his question was basically, uh, does the Minister of Local Government, which is Nick Smith, um, have confidence in the financial management of Auckland City Council or mm. Auckland Council as it's branded now? Um, and. Uh, Nick Smith came back with his evaluation of, you know, if there was any concerns by Winston Peters, he has the opportunity to take those concerns along with the facts that he has gleaned to the uh, Auditor General. And then the outcome of that from the Auditor General is something that the government, meaning him as the Minister of Local Government, would look at very closely. So, wasn't satisfied with it. So yep. I've, I've got a um, I've got a clip here. Um, is this is this him getting booted out? Well, that that was the background to it. What I've just talked about. Yeah. What happened there was Winston Peters was not satisfied. He tried to get his questions relating to national taking responsibility to a person that they appointed during that transition period, where Winston Peters alleges there was impropriety of uh, of, of contracts um, going out to uh, third parties. Now he wasn't satisfied with that. He sat there, and a couple of questions later, ones where, where, uh, you, you'll see this in the clip coming up now, Glenn. Oh, no, I've invited, I've invited Grant Robertson to repeat his question. Uh, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. The Speaker, that, that sort of insult really requires an apology, particularly from some illiterate woodwork teacher. Order! <laughs> Order. Order. Now, the member just heard me tell the Right Honourable Jerry Brownlee that his point of order was totally out of order. OK, I did it in reasonably good humour. The member knows that he cannot use points of order to abuse other members. He will now leave the House. And off he goes. Yeah, off he goes. He gets up, picks up his thing. He, he doesn't even give a wave of gesture of goodbye. He's out the door. Now, um, and that was old Lockwood Smith at his most staunch. You know, you, you won't see him as, uh, as, as more firm than, any, than he was yesterday. An, an, an illiterate woodwork teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. And what, what would happen is Winston Peters felt that Jerry Brownlee um, had uh, had um, insulted um, others. And so he, he said, you know, that insult, uh, for those who couldn't hear um, because of the clapping and laughing in the clip, um, he's basically said um, that requires an apology, especially from somebody who is an illiterate woodwork teacher. And that was it. You know, Lockwood Smith was up. Now, uh, beyond all the theatre and beyond all of this, what was going on there um, was clearly Winston Peters putting the pressure on Lockwood Smith, the Speaker of the House. Um, he's the gatekeeper, if you like, to how effective these MPs are when they're in the debating chamber. Mm. And all this, since the election, since Parliament re, um, re, re um, sat um, this year, Winston Peters has been stamping his mark as in a very, very effective opposition leader. In the, in the parliament. And remember, that's a significant thing because for the last three years, you know, the opposition benches have almost been, you know, 
it, it's sleep material watching them. What's happened in this term is it's woken up. I think we predicted a little bit of this in the outcome of the la uh, last election prior to Parliament sitting on your show, Glenn, that it would liven up a bit. It would be more effective. There would be more power in the opposition. It's exactly what we have seen. Um, Winston Peters putting the pressure on. He's had a lot of hits. The other leaders, I've got to, got to add that uh, the Prime Minister John Key and the formal leader of the opposition, David Shearer, uh, leader of the Labour Party, were not in Parliament yesterday. Um, and what we saw really was Winston Peters leading the charge, really. He was stamping his authority on the House. He was showing that he is the leader of the opposition, and you know, if not formally, in name. Mm. Uh, and, and what we saw was the Labour Party getting in behind him and working as a pack with right. Winston Peters and his team. But also, for the, you know, really, I think for the most significant um, time, we saw Russell Norman, co leader of the Green Party, coming in on that question we mentioned earlier about, you know, the Auckland Council and supporting Winston Peters' purpose of trying to peel away all the standing orders and all the formality to find a way of getting Nick Smith, as Minister of Local Government, to face up to a responsibility where Peters was clearly going to allege that it was not satisfactory. And you, you saw those opposition party leaders, oh, David Shearer wasn't there, but you saw Trevor Mallard, the uh, Labour's shadow leader of the House, working with Peters, working with um, Russell Norman to get you know, pressure on Lockwood Smith as a speaker to find a way through to get to uh, Nick Smith. Now, it's almost like sport in a sense, hmm. except it's a very serious game here um, involving many people and money, etc., etc. But that's the way you can kind of look at these things. And it's, it's an interesting um, kind of turn of events. I don't think in the New Zealand Parliament, even under MMP, have we seen this coordinated pack working in an opposition sense um, for, well, I've never seen it in my view. Uh, what sort of um, goings on would be happening um, outside the debating chamber in order to get this working as it is inside the chamber? Well, what we saw is a few weeks ago, we saw um, on, on the Campbell Live program, we saw Winston Peters and David Shearer, the leader of the Labour Party, standing side by side, giving their opinion on a particular thing that was being discussed that day. That was a very, very strong mes message coming out where those two leaders were clearly in agreement on an issue, but clearly working and cooperating to get a desired effect. It's also Winston Peters perhaps being... Um, reasonably honourable in a sense, knowing that David Shearer is new to this game. Mm. Um, he, he's obviously got leadership talent and uh, all of those things that the Labour Party have acknowledged to put him through as its leader, as the party's leader. But he, but he does not have that, um, that striking attack dog mentality that only comes in, inside Parliament, inside the debating chamber, mm. that only really comes through long years of experience and knowing the ins and outs of everything. And there's Peters basically marshalling, in a sense, David Shearer, standing beside him, not trying to actually kick him out of the way and steal the limelight, but working as a team with him. Um, we've seen the Greens, I think, we kind of picked up that they were feeling a little bit outside of the pack uh, for a few weeks there. Um, but clearly, outside of the debating chamber, like that question you put there, there has been some sort of an accord that has shaped up here. Mm. And it might have been just a grin, a wink and a handshake that has gone on. That's all it takes to do that. But it's the leaders doing this um, and the experienced shadow minister, uh, shadow spe uh, leader of the House, Trevor Mallard, etc., who know the standing orders like the back of their hands that are working and putting pressure on the government. I've never seen the National Party under such pressure. And I think that is one of the key reasons reasons why we're seeing more critical analysis coming out of the parliamentary news um, organisations at the moment. Greg. Excellent. Well, keep your eye on livenews.co.nz for more commentary on this uh, and also Parliament TV as well, where all the action will be happening uh, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Thanks very much, Selwyn. Okay, Glenn, take care. Selwyn Manning there. It's